Hello and welcome to a windy Huntington Stadium. The new rugby league season is almost upon us. We have a new head coach, a new look squad, and new hope for success. And so, to follow the team is a new series of Inside the Knights. season is well and truly underway and what a start it's been. A tremendous win over Leeds Rhinos like last year and a win over Doncaster Dragons. So for our first interview in the new series I've come to speak to the new Knights head coach Mick Cook. 43 year old Mick Cook joins the club as head coach as part of the new partnership with Super League champions Leeds Rhinos. Last season he was assistant first team coach at Leeds and also steered the Rhinos senior academy side to the league leaders title and their first grand final. I started by asking Mick how he's settling into his new role as head coach of the York City Knights. Yeah, it's been great. The, the players have really responded very well. Um, obviously Ferris and, and the back, you know, the backroom team, they've been very good as well. I've got some good coaches around me, Paul Broadbent, Daryl Powell obviously. Colin Sanchez, Jason Ramshaw, we've got, we've got a good bunch of coaching staff, we all get along very well. The players get along together and it's going really well as, as far as I'm concerned. So you've had a tremendous start with the two victories so far, are you happy with those performances? Yes and no, we, we've still got things, the game, them games are to, to see how we are at the moment with the work we've been doing out here on the, on the training field as you view tonight. And we've, we've, we've had a few blips in there which we are working on. But the lads, the lads understand that we we're still early days yet, and we have a long way to go to be you know a real successful team this year, which is our aim. So we, we're ha we're happy at the moment, but we realise we've got a few things we need to fine tune. So how's training going? Training's going great. The the lads respond to everything that you give them. You know the the hungry for advice, and they respond well in the drills, and they get the intensity up there, which is what they need. And it, it's going really well as far as you know. It's, it's, all the coaching staff are quite happy with way you know the way things are going. So is your squad complete? Can you see all the piece in the jigsaw there for a, for a successful team? Well, I think we've got as much as we can have at the moment, according to Steve. You know, he's, he's obviously got a budget. We've got, we've got the starting squad that we'll use to start the season. If a little bit of cash comes available and a, and a player that could influence the side becomes available, then we would be interested, uh, if and when. But, but we're really happy with the squad we've got at the moment. They're a real hard-working bunch, and we're hoping, as, as you can see by the performance against Leeds and, and Doncaster, we are capable of performing and beating teams above our standards so um, yeah we're happy with what we've got. So how does your job differ do you feel from your job last season at Leeds Rhinos? Well I'm still here giving an interview to TV for a start that's uh, that's new for me and and the press coverage and answering questions from all the press and, and just the management of the side the group of players it's totally different to the ones I've been used to As, you know I'm not the manager of the first team at Leeds I've never, I never have been uh, I'm the manager of this team and I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's a different challenge altogether. Well, that's the first of quite a number of interviews throughout the season, Mick, so I have to get used to it. Thinking on the practical side of the link-up with Leeds Rhinos, what practical effect has it had and, and what benefits do you feel from that link-up? The facilities, for a start, we've had access to the Leeds gymnasium since pre-season, so every Sunday we train at Leeds and then we go out on the fields there and do a field session. And obviously, there's Peter Fox here at the moment. It's been a revelation. At the start of the season, he's, he's been outstanding, hasn't he, with the last two games? And th there's probably a few more young players in there. Once they've, if we get a few injuries, and we need to bring a few players in, there's some quality players that will come in and help help the York side as well as benefiting the players from Leeds, uh, get get valuable first team experience. So th there's a strong link there. We, and, and it's just it's just great to have access to things at Leeds. You know, little things like videos and and bringing the players in. It's, it's just. It's just a real quality link with a quality club. So with the job as head coach of York City Knights comes the massive expectation of the supporters. <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I, I know the, the supporters have their own views. We have his own views as well. It's going to be a really competitive league this year with looking at the recruitment of Swinton and Dewsbury and Blackpool and Gateshead and, and London Scholars. You know, it, it, you can't say we're just going to go out and win the competition. You have to earn the right to do that, and that becomes on a weekly basis, which is all we're looking at. We're just looking at the whole game next, getting our prepara you know, preparation correct for that, and we go to Hull to, to make a good account of ourselves and, and hopefully turn them over if, if we can. 
Um, from then, we're looking at Castleford. Our preparation will start after the whole game for Castleford. We go to Castleford, a very difficult game for us. Castleford Super League, say, you know, last year relegated. They'll be keen to stamp their authority on that division and, and around the, the lower division. So, it, but we're looking forward to. It. We're, we're confident at the moment. We're a confident team and we're preparing well. So, that's that's half the battle. What's your first impression of the Knights' supporters? Oh, excellent, excellent. I actually watched two games before I took the job on. Both was against Workington down here, and and they're very vocal. They get behind the team, even when they're not playing really well you know but they stay behind the team and they get behind them and that, that's a real positive for the fans you know things aren't always going to go well in life and it doesn't go well all the time out on there and but to get behind them when it's not going well is far more advantageous and far more inspirational than, than booing the players and they don't do that here I've, I've, not, I've not witnessed it and if things aren't going right just get behind the lads and, and will them on because they, will, they, will, they are busting the butts to, to do well for the club there's a few cobwebs to blow away. Obviously, we had a great season last season, but we were kind of very cruelly denied in the last seven minutes of the uh, final against Halifax. How do you feel that you can kind of give people a boost around here with some good performances? Well, if you've watched the first two games, I don't think we we, we played some nice stuff against Leeds, some great, real good football. We played some nice football against Doncaster, but we wasn't happy with our performance against Doncaster. If it had been a competition, we'd have been happy with the two points, but we wasn't happy with our you know, performance, which says a lot. To the squad, you know, they want to expect, you know, higher expectations of themselves and higher standards, and and we want to give them that, and we want to breed that, so that we don't slip up this year, if, you know, by losing three or four games on the trot. We have consistency where we're a very difficult team to beat, and teams have to play very well to beat this team, and all the all the more so at home. We want to have a real, you know, siege atmosphere at home, and if teams want to come here, they've got to do something special to take anything away, and that's what we're trying to build on at the moment, and it. it, it the players, the players are up for it. They're a good bunch, and we're hoping that's will carry us through. You mentioned the contenders in National League Division Two. Also, looking at the Northern Rail Group, it's quite a tough group. Castleford and Felliston, both well, Castleford obviously ex Super League, Felliston right up there near the grand finals in the in last year's competition, and Huntsley. Yeah, you get what you served up though. Um, they may think that of us, so we, we just we think yeah, it's a tough group. And we're just going to do, you know, prepare properly and, and do as best to just keep ourselves happy, really. If we can finish with a silly question, which I often ask silly questions, what would be a good season, in your opinion, for this club this season? Well, an excellent season would be to to, to win the competition. Um, everybody's saying, oh, yes, you're going to win the competition, but I'm a bit more streetwise than that. I know that things like that have to be earned. I run a 21 team last year who crushed the division. We crushed Bradford twice and we got beat in the grand final by Bradford. So nothing is taken for granted as York saw last year in the grand final where you totally outplay a team for a massive period of the game and it comes back it comes back and bites you on the back end. And and we have to we have to learn from that, as everybody does, and I have to learn as a coach, was my preparation correct and am I giving them the right things? And we have to work very hard that little blips and slip ups like that we try and eliminate them this year and we're real strong throughout the season. And you know, every time we approach a game it's with the right mentality. We're not going to go there and just pick up the two points. We have to earn the right to do that. So that's a good season comes on the back of week in, week out performances, not making statements at the start that we're going to be this and we're going to be that. That's 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 untrue. It doesn't work like that in, in life and it doesn't work like that in rugby league. Well, we're looking forward to following you, Mick, and uh, all the best for the season. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot. It's been great. The thoughts there of the new Knights head coach, Mick Cook. Now, the first player that I've come to speak to could be one of the stars of the season. He's on loan for a year from Leeds Rhinos, and that guy is Peter Fox. York-born Peter Fox is on a one-year loan deal from the Leeds Rhinos and has already made quite an impact, with a hat-trick in his first game for the Knights against his parent club in the pre-season win at Booth and Crescent. Peter is highly regarded and, at only 20 years old, shows the kind of class the team will need for success in the forthcoming campaign. So Peter, what are your first impressions of the York City Knights? Um, I think it's a brilliant set-up, a brilliant set of lads. Um, the fans are outstanding to the sport for the club. Uh, obviously, I'm a York lad, so I've got a bit of passion about the team anyway. Um, I'm just enjoying playing with men. They got off to an amazing start, a hat-trick against Leeds Rhinos. How did that feel? Um, it felt uh, pretty good, but I was more um, 
um, thinking about my defence really. That was more important to me than scoring the tries. And so, how does this club differ from what you used to at Leeds? Um, well, at Leeds I was training five nights a week, whereas here I'm training three nights a week. So, but I tend to get a lot of sessions in myself. Um, and obviously I'm playing with older, more experienced players who have played in Super League, like Dan Potter and players like that. So what do you think of the squad that's been assembled here? I think he's a very good choice. Um, there's a lot of experienced players in there, also young players. So, and the fitness in the squad is very, very good as well. We're coming call Sanctuary. So you've got um, quite an impressive lineup of coaches. Obviously you've got um, Mick and obviously Daryl Powell, Paul Broadbent, Jason Ramshaw. So, I mean, are you happy with that with that setup of coaching? It's pretty impressive. Well, it's been outstanding at the moment. You know, I'm, I've got no... I mean, a lot of work I did with Cookie last year. You know, I'm helping setting the standards in training, things like that. So, I'm just helping out a lot in training. They've got quite a big advantage compared to some of the other lads. As you're from York, you used to play for York Acorn. So you must have quite a few supporters in the stands when you're on the field. Um, I wouldn't say that. I'd say there's a lot of players, a lot of fans that come to watch. But um, a lot of York City, City Knights fans, you know, know a lot of the play, other players as well from outside of York. So it's just a mixture really at the moment. And how proud are you to play for your hometown club? Oh, I'm very proud, you know. I'm, I'm extremely proud. I wanted to play for York last year when I've been seeing him in the press and things like that. So I've always had my eye on him. So. And so York City Knights. I mean, you've seen what rugby league has been like over the years in York, and obviously the Wasps folded. How important do you think the York City Knights is to rugby league in this city? I think it's very important. Um, it's obviously um, a, a town that's not had a, much luck really in rugby league, and um, I think if York City Knights do well then a lot more people will be interested in it around the York area and places like that. So a lot of kids will be sitting in the stands and, and on the terraces looking up to you as a player in the team now and they'll probably want to follow in your footsteps. So how did you start in rugby league and how did a York lad get to the stage where you know, you're at Leeds Rhinos and obviously now playing for the Knights? Well obviously I started off at York Acorn, started off in the under sevens when my dad took me down training one night and then I just, just played it from them and there's a, lot, there's a lot of rugby in my family anyway so we've always been interested in it. So that's basically how we got set up from there, and then got scouted through through to Leeds. So you're here for a year on loan. Is this your big opportunity to really kind of make something of yourself as a player? Yeah, I think it's a big uh, learning curve in my development as a player, playing with older men. It's a lot more physical, I found, than 21s last season. Um, I think that... It's a step up from 21s, a big step up. So I'm just going to stick to my systems that Cook it, Mick Cook's put in and then see how it goes, really. I'm really confident, actually, about this season. So finally, you're from York, so you'll know many, many Knights fans. You'll know the expectation there is in the city that we want promotion, third attempt. Can we do it? Um, I don't really want to, you know, <laughs> be too confident, but I think we've got a very good chance with the team we've got. Just... Um, Every game is a step forward, really. We've got to keep training hard and sticking together and get the team atmosphere going. I think that's very important. Well, thanks for speaking to us, Peter, and let's hope there's a few more hat-tricks this season. All right, thank you very much. Peter Fox, who I'm very sure has got a bright future in the game of rugby league. Join me after the break for some of that pre-season action.
That zone will be keeping you up to date with the latest news throughout the campaign. But for this first programme, we're taking a look at the lineups for this season's League and Cup. The Knights will face a difficult challenge if they're to win National League Two in 2005. Dewsbury Rams are many pundits' favourites for the title, and a narrow 14-18 defeat in pre-season against the mighty Bradford Bulls certainly backs up that prediction. Looking down the list, Gateshead will be a very much improved outfit this coming season under the stewardship of new coach and former York Wasp player Dean Thomas. Completing the lineup are some more formidable names. 
Sheffield Eagles are always a strong competitive side, as are Workington and Steve Ferris's former club, Hunslet. One of the most dangerous opponents, aside from Dewsbury, will be Keithley Cougars, who will want to prove a point after a disappointing season last term, relegated from NL1. The league this year is difficult to predict, but the Knights have as good a chance as any to make it third time lucky and win that elusive promotion spot. The Northern Rail Cup has thrown up an intriguing draw for the Knights, with that name at the top on everybody's lips, Cass Tigers. The visit of the former Super League outfit should be quite an occasion, with a big crowd expected. Hunslet will provide a stiff test, and once again it's Featherstone Rovers, a side with revenge in their thoughts after four wins out of four for York in our clashes last season, including that legendary Challenge Cup triumph at Post Office Road. Again, this one's hard to predict, but progression here for the Knights will be pretty tough. So let's take a look at the Knights' opening fixtures for the season. The Northern Rail Cup provides the curtain-raising games for 2005, and what a mouth-watering start. Castleford Tigers at the Jungle on February the 13th, kick-off 3.30pm. What a test for the New Look squad. First up at Huntington Stadium this time is Hunslet Hawks, where the Knights will be looking to win comfortably if they want to do well in the tournament. And then it's another trip to the Lionheart Stadium to meet Featherstone on February the 27th. It's a tough start, but one that will steal the side for the league campaign. And with season ticket sales up and the City of York right behind the lads once again, expect a good atmosphere at all of these three games. All Knights fans will realise that this is our third season since formation. There's been a lot of changes on the field in the playing staff and also the coaching staff has chopped and changed. But one person who's been a constant in all that time is the Knights Chief Executive Steve Ferris. And earlier today I came down here to speak to him. Steve Ferris has been the Chief Executive of the Knights since the club's playing start in 2003. The main mover and shaker at the club, he has been instrumental in the success story so far and this is another big season for Steve and for the club. Steve, before we talk about this season, let's have a word from you now the dust has settled about last season and has it affected the morale, the kind of cruel way we just missed out last season? No, I think you've got to look forward, Phil. Um, that game's gone and gone by a long time now. I haven't plucked up the courage yet to, uh, to watch it again on the video but um, like I say, it's, it's history now and... Uh, it was unfortunate at the time, but uh, the lads gave it the best shot and on the day it wasn't quite good enough. So looking forward to putting the squad together for this season, how's the squad looking? It's looking quite good at the moment, obviously we've, we've had a couple of setbacks uh, in that uh, with, with 24 players and already Chris Spurs, uh, he's broke his tibia and his ankle and it's unlikely they'll play all season. So we won down to 10 to 23 and then uh, Ian Kirk suffered a... Uh, a broken hand, so he's going to be out for probably six to eight weeks. Um, but you know he's over the worst of that now, so he, he could be back for the whole game. Are there any gaps in the squad that you think might need to be filled before the the first game? Not necessarily gaps. I think there are areas where we, we'd like to have a bit more strength in depth, uh, particularly probably in the middle of the park, in set at the centre, um, uh, and, and prop forward. Uh, so you know there are options we're looking at, uh, but it's getting the personnel at this stage of the season. Yeah, but we're quite optimistic that uh, we'll be able to add to the squad before the end of the season. There's been a lot of talk about the new link-up with the Leeds Rhinos. Could you explain a bit more about that and what exactly does it mean for the club? Well, the biggest thing with the Leeds Rhinos development uh, is purely development of players um, in terms of uh, the link with the playing side of it. Um, what we're trying to do is, is develop players, uh, whether they play with York City Knights or whether they play with Leeds Rhinos, make them better players. Um, it, it's evident now that what we've got at York uh, with Mick Cook Daryl Powell, Paul Broadbent and Jason Ramshaw helping and Colin Sanctuary as well with a, a coaching resource that's better than, uh, better than anybody in, in, in our two divisions and probably as good if not better than some in Super League and, and that's a, it's, a, it's a big statement but I honestly believe that um, and that resource is there to develop the players that we've got. We've got a young, a young squad, we've not got um, old players that have been round the, round the block that uh, you need one or two of those, you need some experience in your side but we haven't got a glut of those you know with, in with a view to kick us out of this division. It's a case of developing the, the, those players and developing the players that are coming through. And if they're good enough to progress, then you know obviously they'll go through the, the, the Rhino system if they're good enough to pro progress with Leeds or with anybody else. If they're not, they'll find the level somewhere along the line. All we're, all we're trying to do is help them find the level a bit quicker. Um, 
if we do the right things, then you know we'll be uh, in Division One at some stage, um, just under sitting under Super League. So there's there's an outlet there for players that are playing a higher level than than two. So that, you know that that would be ideal again, work in the in the lead sort of scenario. So there's a lot of work going in, into developing players uh, um, and individuals. I feel that's the first and foremost part. It's not a case of being a feeder club. If there's any feeding done, it's probably feeding the other way. But it's the intention to develop players. So on the field, there's a lot of developments, obviously with the, with the Rhinos. How's the momentum going off the field? Well, the momentum um, it's gathering pace all the time, and, and it does gather pace the more that you play. Um, obviously, the season hasn't kicked off yet. We've had two pre-season pre friendlies, um, but season tickets are up 20% on what there was last season. There's, there's a lot of interest. There's good vibes around the town. I think you know it's fair to say that over the, over the past two seasons we've done things right, and and, and you know we're getting a, a good solid following. Last season, this time last year, I asked you about crowds and you said that you're expecting an increase and you were right. What is your prediction for this season in terms of the numbers we're going to get through the turnstiles? Well, again, you know, it, it'd be... It, it would like to increase probably the same amount as we did last season, you know, put two or three hundred on the gate on average, so that would take it from probably 15 to 17, 17, 18 hundred, which again would be a, a, a massive push forward. Um, but it's... Uh, Everything's pointing that you know we're doing the right things, and I think people are believing in what we're doing, and, and, and the credibility is you know within the club's good. So there's no reason at all, providing we put the performances on the field, that uh, you know the people shouldn't come and watch us. So every time the crowds increase, the number of empty spaces in the stadium gets a bit smaller. And obviously, we had the Leeds Rhinos game at Bootham Crescent or Kit Kat Crescent, as it's now known. Do you think? In the future, you might be playing more games at Bootham Crescent. Obviously, we're thinking about games like the Castleford game, where there should be a, a very big crowd. Well, you know, it's an option, Phil. It's, it's always an option, oh, and we're grateful to you know York City Football Club for allowing us that option. We'll take uh, you know an old cliche, one game at a time, and uh, we'll, we'll look at it on its merits and, and, and work from there. So, thinking about the league campaign, this season there seems to be a lot more contenders than last season. A lot of talk about Dewsbury Rams and, and the money that they've invested. Do you think that's a bonus? Maybe is less pressure than we had last season, or do you think you know it's going to be tougher? Oh, there's no doubt it's going to be tougher. It's going to be tougher in Super League, it's going to be tougher in First Division, it's going to be uh, tougher in uh, Second Division and, and even in L3. Um, it, it's fantastic that it is going to be tougher. You need a vibrant competition. Um, Jewsbury have, have, have recruited very, very well. They've, they've spent a lot of money on, on, on Super League players, uh, five of them. So, you know, they're going to be pushing. Uh, Workington have pushed the boat out, as have... Um, uh, Gates said, um, you know, they're all expecting to be better. The, the, one, the one that's a dark horse, really, is Swinton. They've uh, recruited very, very well and uh, very astutely. And, and at 33 to 1, they look a, a good outside bet at this moment in time. But, you know, it's, it's each game at a time, as, as we said previously. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to a, a really competitive division. So, how do you rate our chances? I have to ask you that question. <laughs> Well, I honestly believe that if the, if the players play to the potential, um, we're as good as anybody in the division. I think we proved that last season and, you know, what we've done this season is we've, we've lost some players, unfortunately, some we'd like to have kept, but that, that's the nature of the beast anyway. Um, effectively, we've now got 23 players. If you ask me, are we better than last season, I'd say the 13 were probably on a par. Um, and maybe a touch below in terms of the, the, the starting lineup on paper. However, on the field and the pattern of plays and, and, and what makes got them doing and the, the ability of the players to do certain things has given us other advantages. So we're probably a touch in front. But overall, as a squad of 23, we're definitely a lot stronger than we were last season with more strength in depth. So that should stand us in good stead. Finally, Steve, obviously you're chief executive of the club. This is the third season of the club's existence. Are you as motivated and as happy in a job as you were when you first started, maybe more so? A difficult question. It's, it, it, it is hard to keep yourself motivated. Uh, it's not so much the motivation, it's the fear of, fear of defeat, fear of failure, I think, that keeps you going, Phil. Um, you know, there's a lot of good people putting a lot of hard work in at York City Knights and uh, all we want to do, really, is see the Knights go well. Well, so do we, and thanks very much for talking to us. Cheers, mate. That's all for this, the first edition in the new series of Inside the Nights, and we'll be back every month following the fortunes of the team throughout the season. Finally, if you haven't been down to Huntington Stadium before to watch the Knights, then why not come along and give it a try? It's great entertainment, and these lads behind me give 100% for the club and for the city of York. See you there. Bye-bye.